So I've been seeing this skull candle, this, this bleeding skull candle all over Pinterest, TikTok, Instagram. And I was like, hmm, that looks fun. It's a creepy craft. And I do know a smidge about candles. I've made a couple of sculpture candles. I used to have one on my Etsy, not to make you think that I actually know what I'm doing ever, but I have a little bit of um, background in how to make candles. So let's get this guy cut open. Let's melt some wax and pour it in them and see if we can't make a fun bleeding candle. Okay, supplies have been acquired. We have our skull. We have a glue gun. We have our measuring cup. We're gonna be melting the wax in this guy. The thing that's great that's about melting wax in these is that they're heavy. They don't do any kind of weird floating around in the water. And they have this little spout so that when we, when we are pouring the wax into this guy's head, it's not gonna be going everywhere. It's gonna be a nice little stream of hot wax, which hurts if it spills on you. We have an X-Acto knife for cutting the hole in the skull's head. And then we have our dyes, a couple of wax dyes, paraffin wax, wicks, our wick holders, and then we have a whole box here that I'm looking at of soy, soy wax. And last but not least, we have pumpkin patch scent because why not add a little scent to our candle? Today we are going to be mixing two different kinds of waxes. We're gonna do a blend of soy and paraffin here. Uh, the reasoning for that is because the coloring of just plain old paraffin turns out not how I usually like. Paraffin really makes that color pop and the soy makes it nice and soft and adds like a little bit of cream to it. So. That's what we're gonna be doing. I actually ended up making this guy last year just as an experiment. Didn't put him in my store or anything, but I made this little pumpkin out of a mix and I think that his color turned out really nice. I'm gonna be doing an orange skull instead of a classic white. And then I'm going to be doing black seeping, like kind of like black sludge is sleep, seeping, seeping out of him. My theme, this Halloween has been black, white, and orange. So why not keep it on theme? And then I can maybe place these guys in my living room. <laughs> so first let's get our trusty, dusty, crusty uh, wax melting pot. I only use this for wax melting because it's not super high quality and I usually like to turn up the heat kind of high to, to get the wax going. Let's get our pots out and we're gonna fill this up with some water and get that boiling. While we wait for that water to boil, let's go ahead and get like an idea of where we're gonna cut this hole that we're pouring the wax into. So I think for placement, the top, the frontal lobe. <laughs> I think that's it. I think that's gonna make the most sense. So I'm just gonna get my marker out here. We want it to be a decent sized hole, but not, you know, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. And that should be, yeah. I feel like that should be good. Okay, now we can see that the water is boiling, so I'm just gonna gently place my wax in here. It gets pretty bubbly, so just be careful when you're putting that in. Okay, so I have taken off my rings, of course, to be, you know, just to be extra careful, and now I'm going to carefully cut this hole out with this X-Acto knife. Okay, all right. That was a pretty easy puncture. That looks pretty 
good. The hole is there at the top. He's looking great. I'm gonna go just kind of rinse him just in case there's some like weird particles happening in there. Okay, so I just rinsed him out and another great thing I forgot to mention about doing that is you'll be able to see where any possible leaks are and pouring water in revealed that there's a tiny little hole here. So that's really important to patch that up because when you're pouring your hot wax in, you do not want it leaking out from the chin. We're gonna patch that little thing up with some hot glue. Okay, so now that the wax is like nice and melted, I'm gonna start testing the color just to make sure that it's kind of like at a stage that I want it to be. And to do that, I'm gonna use this little plate here and I'm just gonna do little drips, little color test drips. Ooh, okay, that's looking nice. I think I might add just a little bit more, just a pinch more. Now let's try, I put in a couple more chips. So it's hard to tell on camera, but that is slightly darker, but I think I wanna go darker. Last but not least, we're gonna add our pumpkin scent. Okay, so now that the wax is like pretty good to go, we're gonna wanna secure our wick to the skull. And the best thing with candles, the most desirable is to have it center of the candle. It's the best location if you want the candle to burn like evenly. Now we're gonna put that right in there. Okay, we have it right. If you can see it, that looks pretty good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour the wax in the hole and we're gonna kind of do like a gyration of like swivels, like yeah. Get, get as much as we can and then we're going to pour it out into, back into the container so that we can get like the sides. I don't know how that's gonna turn out. You're, you're following along with me on this journey, so. And you're gonna want to be very careful, just FYI, um, with the heat of the skull and the wax. Okay, so we have our first dose. I'm going to just kind of tilt this around the skull. I am swiveling it, thinking like a tilt-a-whirl carnival ride, which honestly I've never been on because no thank you. Okay, so far I will say getting the frickin' eyeballs is really tricky because they jet in a lot because they're so concave. So, so you have to like really make the wax go over this hump. So that is tricky. Yes, we got an eye, we got an eye. And come on, yes, there we go guys, we got it. We got both eyeballs. All right, let's let that, let's let this wax kind of sit in the jaw area a little bit and see, we're not leaking. We're not leaking no wax because we took care of that. 
Now that I feel like I coated this nice and well, it's like, he's feeling nice and heavy. I'm gonna put this in the fridge or maybe I should put him in the freezer. Yeah, I'll put him in the freezer and then I'm gonna pop him back out once this is all cooled and I'm gonna do another layer. So it's kind of like a layer by layer thing. See you in a little bit. Okay, so I just took him out of the freezer. He fell, but it's all right because we're gonna be pouring more wax in there. It's like a little bit cracked, but that's okay. We're gonna, gonna do our second layer now and uh, put it in a better spot this time. Okay, so we have taken this guy out of the freezer, poured another layer in, out of the freezer, poured another, all that stuff. Um, to now we are at four layers. So I think that that is good. Yeah, he's feeling heavy and we're gonna move on to the next step. Good morning. I have pulled him out of the freezer and now we're gonna get melting the wax that's gonna be the bleeding part. So he's looking good. Everything's looking good, but we won't know um, completely until we pull him out of this mold. But yeah, let's get that bleeding wax going. Excited. Okay, but also nervous. It's gonna be fine. Here we go. Oh my God, are you kidding me? You guys, I don't think this is gonna fill it. I think we're gonna have to make more. <laughs> yup. Another 20 minutes later and we have more black wax. So hopefully this is, this should be enough. Okay, as I was pouring, I realized since this skull uh, lays like this, I have to kind of hold him upright like this because otherwise the wax, the black wax is gonna pour out the side and this part of the head hasn't even been filled up yet. So I'm gonna hold him up straight as such and pour the rest in. Okay, that is looking pretty good. I need to kind of keep him upright or the wax is gonna spill out. So let's, let's see if we can put a cloth, okay, a cloth under him as such to keep him held upright. Okay, so this might be a good solution, holding him up with a towel so that he's, he's kinda sitting more upright. And that way the wax is gonna chill at a nice even level. So this guy is completely filled with that black wax. And now I have orange uh, all melted and ready to go in the pot. So let's get that topped on the skull. Let's top him off. And then he's gonna have one more freezing session and then he's gonna be good to go. We're gonna light him up. So let's finish this off. So same like before, we're gonna want to 
hold him upright so that we don't have any like spillage down the side. So we're gonna hold him upright and pour it in. The finale. All right, so that is good to go. Um, and I'm gonna get him all set up upright so that we don't have any weird spillage with the wax. Okay, it is the next day. I can't believe this has taken three days, but the reason it did is because I wanted to make sure that this candle was completely good to go and cured and solid before I tried to light it up. <laughs> so I left him in the freezer overnight just to be sure. Um, here he is. He is solid. He is heavy. Let's cut off this, this plastic. Let's reveal the skull underneath. <sighs> I'm a little bit nervous. I wonder how hard this is gonna be. I can feel him separating a little bit from the top, so that's good. Hopefully we won't have too hard of a time. So I'm gonna like try to pucker this. Okay, this is a little harder than the uh, initial incision when cutting the hole. When you're cutting your skull out, if you do happen to scrape your candle all the way down, it's not a big deal at all. Because like I said, all you gotta do is get a little heat gun or even a lighter, honestly, and you can fix that right up. you guys okay I'm making a mess but oh, oh wow there he is oh, how freaking cool oh my god he came out so well what a fun orange too that's like the exact color I wanted now like I said he has some imperfections we're gonna go over that we're gonna we're gonna try to fix it what I wanted to. I'm not gonna worry about this because like it's gonna be a puddle of black anyway soon. So I think he he's looking pretty great.
Thank you so much for joining me on this bleeding skull creepy craft. I would say uh, from doing it myself, the tips I would say is just don't top it off. I would fill it with the inside, the part that's gonna bleed and then just leave it and, and then light it from there. If you want ASAP bleeding, like if you're at a party and you want it to be bleeding, I would do that because that took forever for it to get to the like the inside. So that would be my biggest tip. Overall, it was pretty straightforward and fun and maybe I'll try it again. So I have two, but yeah, I had a lot of fun with this and thank you so much for watching. I hope that it was educational and fun and let me know in the comments if you're going to try this craft or if you've tried something else that you saw online. And I would love to check it out. Have a spooky rest of your day and um, happy creepy crafting.